from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020, sponsored by Intel, AWS, and our community partners. Hello and welcome back to theCUBE's virtual coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. It's virtual this year, we're not in person, so we're doing remote interviews. Part of the three weeks we'll be covering wall to wall, a lot of great conversations, news to cover, and joining me today, off, fresh off the news off Andy Jassy's keynote, we have two great guests here, Chaitan Kapoor, Senior Product Manager for Accelerated Computing at AWS, and Eitan Medina, Chief Business Officer at Habana Labs, which was recently acquired by Intel. Folks, thanks for coming on, gentlemen. Thank you for spending the time, for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Chaitan, so talk about the news. Obviously, um, compute is changing, it's being uh, reinvented. That's the theme from Andy's keynote. What did Andy announce? Could you take a minute to explain the announcement? What services, what API, what's going to be supported? What's this about? Take a minute to explain. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so today we announced our plans to launch an EC2 instance uh, based on uh, hardware accelerators from uh, Havana Labs. Uh, we expect these instances to be available in the first half of next year. And uh, these are custom designed for accelerating uh, training of deep learning models. Um, as we all know, like training of deep learning models is a really computationally extensive task. Uh, oftentimes it's, it takes too long and costs too much. And we're really excited about getting these uh, instances out in the market as we expect for them to provide up to 40% uh, better price performance uh, than uh, top of the line GPU instances. A lot of improvements. Why did AWS do this? Why Habana? What's the What's the working backwards document tell you? What is it customers looking for here? Is there a specific yeah. a use case? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, over the years, uh, the uh, the use of machine learning and deep learning has like really skyrocketed, right? So we are seeing companies from all the way like Fortune 500 to like startups just reinventing uh, their business models and, and use, using deep learning more pervasively, right? So we have companies like Pinterest, uh, you know, who use deep learning for content recommendations and object detection uh, to Toyota Research Institute that are advancing the science behind autonomous vehicles. And there's a consistent theme from a lot of these customers that are, uh, you know, innovating in the deep learning space that, uh, you know, the cost it takes to experiment, uh, train and optimize their deep learning models uh, is too high. And, uh, you know, they're looking at us as, as one of their partners to help them you know, optimize their costs, you know, bring them as low as possible while giving them really performing products and enable them uh, to actually bring their markets, their innovations to market as soon as possible, right? Uh, so to answer your question straight on, uh, you know, what's the working backwards? It's a feedback from customers that they want choice uh, and they want our help to uh, lower uh, the amount of compute resources and the cost it takes to train the deep learning models. Eitan, why don't you weigh in here on Hibana and now part of Intel. What trends are driving this? What's the motivation where you guys fit in? What's the view on this? Yeah, so Hibana was founded in 2016 to deliver AI processors for the data center and cloud for training and inference deep learning models. So while building chips is hard, building the software and ecosystem is even harder. So joining forces with Intel simply helps us connect the dots. Ever since the acquisition last year, we were able to significantly boost our R&D resources. And now we are leveraging Intel scale in number of customers and ecosystem and partner support. So what's the name of the product? Is there a chip name? Was it mm -hmm. um, Gaudi is the name? Yes, okay. the product is Havana Gaudi. Okay, and so it's going to be hardware. So it's a hardware software. What's involved? Take us through the product. Yes, so Gaudi was designed from the ground up to do one task, which is training deep learning models. To do that well, we focus the architecture on two aspects, efficiency and scalability. The compute architecture is a combination of fully programmable TPC, tensor processor cores, and a central gem engine. These TPC cores are programmable VLIW CMD machines that we design with custom instruction set architecture and special functions that were developed specifically for AI. The Gaudi chip integrates also 32 gigabytes of HBM2 memory, which makes it easy to port to for GPU developers. Gaudi is unique in integrating 10 ports of 100 gigabit Ethernet Rocky on chip, 
And this is opposed to other architecture which use proprietary interfaces. So overall, improving the cost performance is achieved through efficiency, namely higher utilization of the compute and memory resources on chip and the native integration of the Rocky interfaces. Jaytan, this is actually interesting. As this is the theme for reInvent. We're seeing it right on stage today play out again. Another uh, command performance by Andy Jassy, slew of announcements. How does Gaudi fit into the AI portfolio or Amazon strategy? Because what Aton's saying is, it sounds like he's doing the heavy lifting on all this training stuff when people want to just get to the outcome. I mean, the theme has been just let the products do what they do, kind of put stuff under the covers and just let it scale. Is that the theme here? Is this, where does this all fit in? Take us through how this fits into the yeah. AI uh, strategy for Amazon and also what's, what does is, what is Habana Intel bring to the table? Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, with respect to our overall strategy and portfolio, you know, it's, uh, it's relatively straightforward, right? So we are, laser focused on making sure we have the broadest and the deepest portfolio of uh, services for machine learning, right? So these range from uh, infrastructure services, uh, specifically compute, networking, and storage, all the way up to like managed ML services, which come with pre-trained models and customers can simply invoke them using an API call, right? Uh, so, so from a strategy perspective, we want to make sure that we provide a customer with a choice uh, enable them to pick the right platform for the right use case, uh, help them get to the cost structure they actually want, right? Um, so with, with, with Habana and you know, their acquisition with Intel, we finally have access to uh, hardware, uh, software, and the ability to kind of build out an ecosystem uh, beyond what you know, traditionally is being used, which is, which is GPUs, right? Uh, so, so, so the engagement with with Havana, you know, allows us to take their products and capabilities, uh, wrap it around an EC2 instance, uh, which is what customers will be able to launch, right? Uh, and doing so, uh, we are enabling them to you know tap into the innovation that Eton and the rest of the Havana team are working on, while having a solution that is integrated with the full AWS stack, right? So. Uh, you don't you don't have to rack and stack hardware in your data center. Uh, these are going to be available as standard EC2 instances. You can just click and launch them, uh, get access to software that's already pre-integrated and baked in, and ready to go. Right. Um, so so it's it's it, it, it actually comes down to taking uh, their innovations, uh, coupling it with an AWS solution, and making it super easy for customers to get up and running with uh, with respect to training the deep learning models. All right, well, here's the question that I want to get to. I think everyone's on everyone's mind is, how is it Gaudi different or similar than other GPUs? Specifically, you mentioned the software stack on AWS. Uh, but you get the software stack inside the chip. How is this different or similar to other GPUs? And what's the difference between the software stack versus say traditional libraries? So from day one, we were focused on the software experience and we were mindful uh, in the need to make it easy for developers to use the innovations we have in the hardware. Most developers, if not all of them, are using deep learning frameworks such as TensorFlow and PyTorch for building their deep learning models. So Gaudi's Synapse AI software suite comes integrated and optimized for TensorFlow and PyTorch. So we expect most developers to be able to take their existing models and with minor changes to their training scripts to be able to run them on Gaudi-based instances. In addition, expert developers that are familiar with writing their own kernels will be provided with a full tool suite for writing their own TPC kernels that can augment the Habana provided library. So that's the user experience for the developers, right? That's what you're saying? Exactly, exactly. And we will provide detailed guides for developers in doing that. Uh, Habana will provide open access to documentation, libraries, software, models, and references to Habana's GitHub, and bidirectional communication with the Habana developer community. All these resources will be available concurrently with the AWS instances launch. Okay, so if I'm a developer, how, how do I get involved? It's software on GitHub. Uh, I use the hardware, it's on Amazon, obviously, uh, in their instances, it's a new instance. Take me through the workflow, I'm a developer, I'm, I'm into this, I want to I want to get involved, what do I, what am I doing? Take me through. Yeah, uh, yeah, so I think uh, it's, so if the developer is accustomed to using GPUs for training uh, the deep learning models, 
uh, the experience is going to be practically the same, right? So uh, they'll have multiple options to get started. Uh, one of them would be, for example, uh, to take our deep learning uh, AMIs or Amazon machine images that'll come integrated uh, with uh, software from Habana Labs, right? So customers will take the deep learning uh, AMI and launch it on an EC2 instance uh, featuring the Gaudi accelerators, right? So when with that, they'll have you know the baseline construct of software and hardware available to get up and running with, right? Uh, we'll support you know all different types of workflows. Uh, so if customers want to use containerized uh, solutions, uh, these instances will be supported via our ECS and EKS uh, services. Um, uh, so if they're using containerized or Kubernetes, you know uh, these uh, the solution will just work. Uh, and lastly, we also intend to support these instances through SageMaker. Uh, so just a quick recap on SageMaker, that's our managed service that does end-to-end, uh, -end, that provides end-to-end -end capabilities for training, uh, debugging, building, and deploying machine learning applications. Uh, so these instances will also be supported in SageMaker. So if you're familiar with SageMaker, you can get up and running with the instances fairly quickly. Sounds like it's going to enable a lot of action at SageMaker level uh, and then can that layer. On uh, the use cases, I got to ask you guys quickly, what's the low hanging fruit um, use case applications for this product, this, this, this partnership, because you know, that's going to be the, the first traction set. What are some of these applications going to be used for? What can we expect to see? So typical applications would be image classification, object detection, natural language processing, recommendation systems. Uh, you'll find reference models uh, in our GitHub for that. And we'll be growing that list uh, as you can imagine. Okay, where can people find more info? Give us the data, take them in to explain, put a plug in uh, for how, <laughs> what's all the coordinates, URL, site support, how do people create, um, how do people get involved yeah. in the community? Yeah, so customers will be able to access information on AWS websites and also on Habana Labs website. So uh, we will be kicking off a preview uh, early next year. Uh, so I would highly recommend for customers to find our product pages and uh, sign up for early access and, uh, and preview information. Etan? Yes, and you'll find more information on Habana.ai as well as Habana's GitHub uh, over time. Great announcement, congratulations. Thanks for sharing the news and some commentary on it. This is really the big theme. You know, what COVID-19 and this pandemic has shown is massive acceleration of digital transformation and having the software and hardware out there that accelerates the heavy lifting and creates value around the data, super valuable. Thanks for, for doing that, appreciate Absolutely. taking the time. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank thanks you. for having us. Okay, this is theCUBE's coverage uh, at AWS reInvent. Next three weeks we're here on the ground. We're remote, we're live, we're inside the studio. We wish we could be there in person, but it's remote this year, but stay tuned. Check out siliconangle.com, exclusive interviews with Andy Jassy and Amazon executives and the big news covering there, all there in one spot, check it out. We'll be back with more coverage after this break. Thanks for watching. <laughs>